الصلوات تحفظني بآيات من القرآن هي الحلقات تملوني بحب المصطفى العدنان هي الحلقات تحفظني بآيات من القرآن هي الحلقات تملوني بحب المصطفى يا حبيبي يا رسولي There is no salah, there is no tashahud without the name of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. There is no khutbah of nikah without the name of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. There is no khutbah of jumu'ah without the name of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. There is no act of worship or ibadah without the name of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Whenever there is dhikr, the dua of a person remains suspended between the heavens and the earth until he sends salatu wasalam of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. We should try, we should endeavor to develop this love for Rasulullah that we see this reflection of love everywhere. And forever his name should be on our lips. Just as Allah has given him this honor in Adhan and in the Shahud of Salah and in all forms of dhikr. But Allah himself says, إِذَا ذُكِرْتُ ذُكِرْتَ مَعِي Whenever I remember, oh my Prophet, you shall remember. Whenever I the love of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam should be of such a nature. Astaghfirullah. There is no comparison between this kind of bestial and worldly mundane love and the enlightened spiritual affection and bond that a believer has for the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. The love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam should translate into something positive and should be seen in the life of a believer. Little did they know, but Allah informed them, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ That, O noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your physical presence is such that as long as you are amongst them, Allah will never punish them. Allah will never punish them. And Allah will never punish them as long as they continue to seek forgiveness once. Our Sahabi radiyallahu anhu says that in Kufa, in the heat of the day, when everyone was taking their siesta, I heard a sudden pounding on my door. And someone said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, may I enter? I said, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you may enter. Lo behold, who came in Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu ta'ala. I said, oh, oh, Ibn Masood, what brings you at this hour of the day? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, there is no one to speak to. Therefore I came to you. Come, let us sit down and discuss the ahadith of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. I shall narrate the hadith of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam to you. And you shall narrate the hadith of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam to me. Let us sit and remember his times. As described by one of the Tubi Sahaba radiyallahu anhu Sayyidina Uwad bin Masood radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. During whilst the truce of Hudaybiyah was being signed, he had the opportunity to observe the behavior of the Sahaba Ikiram with Rasulullah. And he said to the Quraysh, that, Oh, my people of Quraysh, I have been to the palaces and the royal courts of many kings and emperors, and I have seen the spectacle of the royal courts of Abyssinia, Rome and Persia. But never have I seen anyone respect their leader as I have seen the companions of Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam show respect to him. When he spits, they rush forward to catch that spit. And then with that spit, they anoint their faces and their bodies. When he washes his limbs and performs his ablution, the water that trickles of his limbs, none of them ever allow that water, a drop of that water to fall upon the earth. Nay, in fact, they rush forward and it seems as though they would break out into a fight in order to get the troops. When he issues a command, they rush forward to carry it out. When he speaks, there is total silence as though they are dumb. And out of reverence and respect, they do not even raise their gaze towards him. 
On one occasion, when the Prophet ﷺ was about to depart for jihad, a woman came carrying a small child, a baby, wrapped in its blankets or clothing. And she came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, you are departing to fight in the way of Allah. I request you, I beseech you, take my child with you. Prophet Sallallahu said, what will the child, what will the child do in the battlefield? The mother of the child said, oh Prophet Sallallahu if this child will not be able to fight, will not be able to wield a sword, or throw an arrow, or throw a spear, or fire an arrow, then at least you will be able to use my child as a shield that my child will bear and take the arrows and the spears that are directed at your mother's We should realize how much we owe him. We are here for his sake. We have been included in this ummah for his sake. The honor that we enjoy for being the last and the best ummah is only because of Rasulullah It is of no good deed on our part. It is of no perfection on our part. It is of no earning on our part, but merely the gift of Allah to us through the blessing of Rasulullah Allah says that you are the best nation selected for the guidance of mankind. But the Prophet ﷺ himself explained in relation to this verse that, that Oh my Ummah, you bring to an end the count of 70 Ummahs. Of all these Ummahs, you, the Ummah of Rasulullah are the most honored and respected in the sight of Allah. And we have that honor. Like I said, only through the blessing and the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and nothing else. He was rahmatun lil alameen for everyone, the mushrikeen, the kuffar, and most importantly, this ummah of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. He is rahmatun lil alameen even for the akhirah. For as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wa ana awwal shafi'in wa awwal mushafi'in yawm al qiyamati wa rafakh. I will be the first to eat seed, and I am the first one whose intercession will be accepted by Allah, and there is no pride in this. The whole ummah, the whole creation will turn to Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam, for he will be the person on that day and as you have heard the hadith many times people will go to all the anbiya each will be worried and concerned for his own salvation each will be worried for his for his own self except for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is the one selected for this he will push straight before allah and allah Jalla, when it lights in him allah will inspire him to him allah's praise to glorify him with words and with praises and with prayers that he himself did not know in the time at the time of narrating this hadith and then after prostrating for so long, Allah Azza wa Jalla will say to him, Ya Muhammad, if I that O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raise your noble head and ask and you shall be given and intercede and your intercession will be accepted when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede he will intercede on behalf not only of this ummah but on behalf of the whole of Allah's creation in one hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and I will conclude with this that every Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given a dua by Allah and that dua will most certainly be accepted by Allah. And every single Nabi's dua has expired. Each Nabi has used up his dua. Except for myself. And I will not use this dua in this dunya. But I will preserve this dua for the akhirah. So that through this dua, I may intercede on behalf of my own. This was the love of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam for his own. He was forgiven, but he cried, he wept, he prostrated, his feet swelled up at night. And he did everything, he sacrificed what he did sacrifice only for our sake. And today, we should question ourselves. What do we do to reciprocate that love? What do we do to honor that love? What do we do to repay that love? And what have we done to show even a fraction of that affection and love for Rasulullah that he showed for us?